Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes. Guess what? It is getting close to basketball time. And, and Blake, where else do we start our preview of teams <laughs> for the 22-23 basketball season than here? Grab your corn nuts. Grab your mm. zero bars. Gas up the must bus. We're going to talk Arkansas basketball today. Fill up the tank. Um, yeah, no, it's it's fitting. We're doing this. It's cold outside. Like it's uh, in the morning. It's just kind of it's like basketball season weather, and um, it's fitting that we start our season previews. And, and look for anyone out there. Why are we starting with Arkansas? It's not because you know necessarily we'll have Arkansas at number one in our power rankings heading into the season, but it's because um, the the originals. The uh, the Southeastern 14 originals know that this is just kind of where everything started for us as a channel. It just seemed like, whatever reason, um, our SEC basketball coverage, which translated into a lot of Arkansas fans coming in, mm-hmm. that was kind of the, the driver for us to become what we've become now. And 3,000 subscribers later, um, yeah, we've, we've kind of expanded beyond Arkansas, but still a great following in that state. And uh, yeah, so we get started with well, it should be one of the better teams in the league. And, and again, I think even a team that has a chance to to win the league um, when you look at the talent that they have uh, across the board. Well, Eric Musselman has made quite a living through the transfer portal. He hit that hard, got several impact transfers. Also got three guys who in the freshman class who are – you know, getting mentioned as future first rounders. He got two elite point guards, both of whom I think have been considered by various sources the best player in the country. Uh, Devontae Davis back. I mean, he, he, a couple of pieces from last year back. Not a lot, but, but a few, and you sort of need a few familiar faces these days. I mean, it's quite a recipe they've got here. Now, my concern is keeping all these guys happy. Uh, we'll get to that later, but the assemblage of talent here Derek Musselman has on this roster is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, look, it, like we said, Eric Musselman's always been the the transfer king. He is the, uh, you know, he is the original of the the transfer portal. Um, you know, someone who just found success with it early on and we've seen it year after year, the guys he brings in. Not everyone will hit every time, but He's his track record is um, as good as as most uh, when it comes to just what he's been able to do with that. And he's found ways to plug these guys in to different roles. And like you said, that I think as the years progress, not just at Arkansas, but at any place in college athletics, keeping everyone happy is becoming more and more of a, a task when you have, you know, so many guys who transfer for different reasons and some guys transfer because they want to play more. And that's not always the case. And you can only put five guys out there, but he's got a lot to work with on this team. Um, you know, by the end of the season, will there be certain guys that we look back and say, boy, we thought that guy would play more? Or, um, probably just yeah. because out of the state of numbers, I mean, that's just going to happen. He's not going to have a 12 a man rotation. Uh, so I think that's, you know, certainly something to look at. But having options is what he's always liked. And he's always found a way to find the right guys um, that he feels like can fit into what he wants to do. And if you look at the success they've had there back to back, you know, trips to the elite eight. Now, clearly he's found the recipe that works. And like you mentioned, I mean, now he's bringing in two. I mean, look, and and we're not even going beyond, you know, that, and we'll talk about the other guys, but you want to talk about kind of leading the way with Nick Smith and Anthony black. Um, You've got two guys that, I mean, my goodness, they are going to be able to really push them into a different, level of play probably when it comes to their their backcourt they'll have one of the best backcourts in the country um and i think that's where kind of everything starts for for this team in particular so yeah well let's let's start our discussion there uh nick smith averaged 26 and a half points eight boards 7.3 assists a game black's numbers were just statistically just not pedestrian but not as good as smith's 13 and a half points almost six boards, four assists a game, 2.2 steals. Uh, But I think he was kind of a a kid who really shot up the charts late. You've seen both of them play. Um, 
you know, I think they'll use them together to start. You know, the, look, you, having two point guards on the floor this day and age is, is not exactly a, a novel concept. But how do you think those two kids get used together? Do you have a an expectation of who's the primary ball handler between the two? I mean, I think the what you're going to look at here is what you said in that you're going to be able to do pretty much anything you want to do offensively because any way you slice it, you're going to have the opportunity to have both guys in that position to where, you know, can equally run what you want to run. And, you know, again, that that's where I think, you know, when you look at what Nick Smith can do, and we're talking about, you know, remember here, we're talking about two guys that are first round draft picks in the NBA. Like these are, these are two guys that are, you know, barring injury are going to go on and, and be just tremendous picks in the, in the first round. I think Nick Smith's going to be the higher of the group, just given, you know, again, what we see from him. But I think because you have a guy like Smith who can pretty much play wherever you want him to play in the backcourt, sure, there'll be times where, you know, all right, let's put him here and he can drive everything at the point. But we can also say, all right, let's slide him over and we'll put Anthony there and um, we'll, we'll run some stuff for Nick Smith over at the shooting guard position. They're going to have so many different ways they can use both of these guys, really. Um, I think just the, again, uh, Smith is going to be, he is, I've said it before, like he is an SEC player of the year. We're not just talking rookie of the year, freshman of the year. We're talking yeah. SEC player of the year type guy. So in that instance, you know, using him in a, a variety of different ways, I mean, he's just, he is like, I know Eric Musselman has talked about, like, he's just a guy that's already fit to, you know, he could play in the NBA right now, Chris. I mean, that's the thing is like, you know, you put him in there yeah. right now and he'd, he'd be fine. Sure. There'd be some growing pains, but he, he'd be okay. So I, I think that's where, you know, most of the time you'll just see those two guys playing off of each other. And um, again, I, I, I don't know that there's an exact method right now. I think it's more of just letting those two guys play off each other, knowing there's going to be some certain stuff you're going to run that'll have one guy, you know, as the point guard, the other guy coming off of a pick and roll or screens and all this other stuff. And that's fine. But the way I look at it with these two is I just think that he has something there that a lot of other teams, not just in the sec, but in the country don't have in that. I think at any time you feel like you've got two guys that can just completely take over a game um, and be able to give you those big plays when you need it. And, and, and look, these aren't just offensive guys either. I mean, that's something else that he's talked about is these are two guys that can, that will really help them on the defensive side too. And we know how important that is uh, in the SEC. So one thing that stands out about those guys and about this team, Blake, usually when we think about size, oh, yeah. we're thinking about the four and five positions and, you know, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. They've certainly got it there. But you look at the roster, they've got 13 scholarship guys. And by the heights I have in front of me, shortest guy on the team is 6'3. You've got these guys are 6'5, is Smith, Black is 6'7. I mean, getting shots off on the perimeter, dumping the ball in the post, whatever you're trying to do you're not usually facing guards that big on the perimeter. And you know Musselman's guys are going to play defense. And if you don't, you're going to find a spot on the bench. And by the way, there's plenty of competition for playing time on this team. That's one dynamic of this team that I really, really like. Yeah, I mean, that's what I have in my notes and going through everything. Size, and I think, you know, Besides the other stuff, we're going to talk about size and rebounding. I think you're going to be two strengths of this team because, like you said, they're not, they're probably not going to play anybody under 6'4". And, you know, when you look at it from that standpoint, not not just is that impressive in and of itself, because, again, usually you've got, you know, six foot five, whatever. Like, you know, sometimes that's just how your, your backcourt's built. But this team is not. Like, they are built with size. And like you said, with those two guys, I mean, what, 6'7", six, 6'5", six, um, those are the guys leading your backcourt. Um, and, you know, I think that just gives you a dynamic that, again, not a lot, not a lot of other teams are going to have um, to be able to work with. And so, 
yeah, it's, I mean, I, I am, I am very excited to see kind of what they're going to be able to do. And, and one thing I will mention here is something else with this team. Look, this team is not going to be as experienced as the team last year. They're, they're, these guys are freshmen that we're talking about with, with Smith and black, and we're going to, you know, Jordan Walsh and all these different guys. I mean, these are, these are young guys. And so the experience not necessarily going to be there. Whereas last year, what Chris, I mean, we're talking about guys like, you know, Note and Tony and mm -hmm. Mude and Jalen Williams. And I mean, we're talking about a lot of upper class Chris likes. Yeah. Chris likes like we're talking a lot of older guys. So I think the expectation and look, we're going to just kind of go all over the board here with the storylines. But I think that's something too, is to think about are, are Anthony black and Nick Smith and those guys, are they going to be perfect from day one? No, no, because I, you have to keep in mind too, they're playing the Maui Invitational this year. Don't forget that. Um, so I think you're going to really see them early on. You know, you, you'll kind of know exactly where Arkansas stands early in the season because of that with the, with the Maui Invitational, with the rest of their schedule. Um, and the thing is, it's like, how many times have we talked about this in recent years? Well, they get off to a three start in the SEC last year. Um, mm -hmm. Owen, I don't even remember what they were the year before. Like, Slow starts have not been that unusual. And even remember what we were talking about last year, Chris, for a team that had that much experience. We said, you know, early on in non-conference play, we're like, man, I don't, I still don't have a great feel for this Arkansas team. Mm -hmm. and they were whatever they were, right? Like they were nine and oh, something like that. And we're like, man, I don't know though, still. Um, I think it'd be a little different with this team because they do have Maui. And, you know, again, the expectations are even higher for this team than they were last year. And I mean, we're talking about a preseason top 10 team in my eyes. Like I said, I've got them around probably six or seven right now. So I think that's something else to think about too. When we, when our, the focus of our conversation is about these spectacular freshmen. And we'll also talk about the newcomers, you know, in terms of transfers, but that's what I think you have to keep in mind with this team specifically is what you see in November, as always with Mus's teams not going to be the same thing you're going to see once you get to February and into March. So, yeah, no, no doubt. And that's, there's just going to be some other interesting things that come with that. Let, let's talk about the, the guys on the wing. You got Devonte Davis who played a huge role for them a year ago. You've got Jordan Walsh coming in at small forward, another first round pick type guy, six, seven, you got Ricky Council the fourth from Wichita State, where he was a, a big score for them last year. Um, Twelve points a game in almost twenty-seven minutes, so he got a lot of shots up in the time that he was out there, and, and shot the ball pretty well too. Um, and is a really good foul shooter, eighty-five percent. You got Kamani Johnson, who you look at the roster and say. And I know Johnson's maybe a different type of player. Uh, he's not a, a shooter so much. But he's a guy that you look at what they bring in with the transfers and the freshmen and think he's sort of an odd man out. But I think he played a lot in their overseas tour. He played pretty well. Um, you, you got Barry Dunning coming in as a six six guy who I think was player of the year in his state. I think that was Alabama, if I remember correctly. Uh, scored 25 points a game, pulled 13 boards. Probably would play a lot more on other teams than he's probably going to play on this one. I mean, I'm I'm being presumptive here. But, again, I'm, I'm looking at 13 scholarship guys on this team, Blake. Looks to me like they can all play. I don't know where that settles. Uh, but, you know, here's here's the thing. You've got the chemistry concern on one end. How do you make it fit? How do you keep these guys happy? They're all great players from what they've done before. But you get a couple injuries, you got got a lot of depth too. Yeah. Uh, depth is a strength of this team. I don't I don't think there's any question in terms of having options. And and like we said, it it's just a fact. Not everybody's gonna play. Like not everybody's gonna, you know, that we talk about here is gonna play the minutes that some of us think they may should. And and that's just how it works sometimes because I think you go into the season always, you look at the best, what's the potential of everybody. And the potential is that all these guys can play, but the reality is they're not going to. And I think that's where you look at some of these guys in particular. Um, you know, I think Walsh, Walsh is an interesting one because he is a very highly rated recruit. And 
I think that he's still, you know, a work in progress. I don't think he's, he's, he's far from a finished product, but that's, that's good. He's a freshman and, you know, at six, seven, what do you, I mean, the, the wingspan, like, that's the thing I noticed when you, even when you're just watching him, you know, even you go back to like the McDonald's all American game and stuff like that, there are people pointing out, well, you know, he just maybe this or that, and he needs to work on this. But I mean, the one thing that stood out to me is like the guy just seems like he just glides down the floor and he's got these very, they talk about size and length and those kind of things that'll really help them. I think on defense, because the thing is like, they don't, they're not going to need him to be a 15 point per game scorer. And and that's kind of what you look at sometimes with some of these best must teams is like, some of these guys don't have to just go out and score. They, they've got that. Nick Smith's going to score points. You don't have to worry about that. Um, Black's going to score. They'll, they'll have some scoring. And we'll talk about one of the things I think they I'm a little hesitant on with them um, in a minute, but you know, I think that guys like that, like Walsh, you talk about Davis. Davis can play anywhere. I mean, he's not going to be the center. Don't get me wrong, but he can play anywhere in the backcourt. Um, he's one of the most experienced guys. They, I mean, probably is the most experienced guy they have in terms of just being in their their system. Um, and so I think that, you know, they're going to lean on him a lot because, again, this is a team that's going to play a lot of young players. Davis is going to be leaned on. It's going to help everybody get where they need to be, and, and you got to have one of those um on the floor so i think like you said guys like that um council what was he the sixth man in the american last year mm -hmm. i think he's someone that um you know he, he'll he'll be someone else that I, I feel like by the end of the season he will probably be someone that is going to just be like okay that guy has to be in the rotation i don't know what its minutes look like but like he's going to have to be in there somewhere and i think that he will play a lot i don't think he's going to wind up being the odd man out by any means, I think that he will kind of give them a lot of different options just because, you know, athleticism. And I don't know. I just feel like he's, he's like a must guy to me. Like he's one of those guys that must feels like he can probably use in a bunch of different ways. Um, you know, you talk about uh, some of the other guys as well. I mean, I think that's probably still to be determined on some of the others and kind of what it looks like uh, just in terms of the, the wing play and, some of those forward positions. And obviously we're going to talk about the big guys in a second, but um, yeah, I think it's, again, it's a group that gives you a lot of options. I think that that trio of Davis council Walsh, you'll see them a lot. I'd be surprised if any of those guys wind up being, you know, odd man out by any means. Um, I think that again, Davis will be the one they lean on just for experience, but I think there's clearly a lot of upside with what council has proven at Wichita state. And I think Walsh is someone that will, Again, he's got all the tools. It's just, it's all about potential in terms of what he can get to in, in this season because he's also someone that clearly is going to eventually go on and play in the NBA. It's just a matter of when. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good problem to have. So, Blake, if you're nitpicking this roster a little bit, I'm looking at three point percentages from a year ago. Yeah. Davis, yeah, 27%, Council, 31 and, and I don't, you know, who is who is the best three point shooter on this team? Is it a new kid? Is it do you see Council or Davis pick? I mean, you do see sometimes veterans pick up their accuracy, and, and God knows they're going to probably have some room, given what Arkansas has inside and given the point guard play. You'd think they would be able to get the ball to guys to spot up for jumpers when they need it. Who are, who are the one or two guys that you think? best suited to knock down a big three when needed. You're asking the question that I don't know the answer to yet, to be honest with you, Chris, mm -hmm. I, I don't know yet. And I think it, and here's, I think the reason why is not necessarily a bad thing. The reason why is because all these guys are so good in terms of being athletic and being able to do things off the dribble and get to the rim and get to the free throw line. I think, because look, I still think this is a team because of this question that we're asking. And I know a lot of people are going to have an opinions on this and say, oh, well, this guy will be able to step up and shoot threes just fine. And, and maybe they will. Um, but I think right now it's a fair question with the team. And, and we're not saying anything. I think that's groundbreaking. If you've read anything like thus far this preseason, if you've, you've seen Eric Musselman talk about some of these things, this is a team that I'd like to see the numbers. And I'm sure I could find them somewhere. But I think when we talk about that foreign trip they took, like I don't even think that was like a big thing. With, like they just they didn't have to shoot a lot of threes. And yeah. I, you know, but there are going to be situations this season where they are going to, I mean, there are teams that are going to basically say we cannot let Nick Smith, Anthony black, all these other guys get the ball 
to the rim in some form or fashion because we we want to make them beat us from outside. I think that's going to be the game plan when you're playing Arkansas is, you know, you're going to try to force them to to beat you from outside. And, and I think that's something, too, with like, like you said, look back at last season when they shoot 30 percent from three, something like that, um, you know, wasn't a strength. The year before they were OK. I think they were pretty kind of in the middle um in the in the first couple seasons i think from us looking at the stats but i don't know the answer to that question but again i think that's not a that's not a negative necessarily because i think they can be so good at getting Mm -hmm. to the rim and making so many plays inside the perimeter that i don't think this is going to be a team that's going to have to shoot you know 23s a game i think if they're doing that something's wrong because i think they're going to be talented enough to be able to to get to the rim and and you know what was the thing we talked about last year right um this team shot a lot of free throws and i think that chris that they're, they're gonna have to do that again i mean I, I think that's just kind of what you expect right like you expect them to get to the free throw line that's kind of how they've been driven you know really i guess the past couple seasons now and I mean, they shot more last year, I want to say, than they did the first couple that Musk was there. But, I mean, they've, they've shot a lot of free throws in the Musk era. And so I think that'll be the same thing here. Because, again, you've got two. We haven't talked about the big guys yet. I, I don't, you know, how much is, like, the offense going to run through the big guys in terms of, like, setting up a lot of stuff for them? I don't know about that. But you also have a lot of big guys that can, I think, get offensive rebounds get fouled, get to the free throw line. Like those are also things that, that kind of add up over time. So the finding consistent points from the perimeter, I think is a fair question heading into the season. Someone will emerge, um, you know, statistically, if you look at it, you can kind of spot the guys you think may emerge in that category. But right now I can't say that there is just a complete stand out in terms of what you expect. Um, and, and I think that that can be something that you look at and say, all right, how do they, how do they figure that part out? Because there are going to be some games where you need that. But ultimately I think that's where a, you know, where your best player, which to me is going to be Nick Smith, Mm -hmm. you know, eventually as you start to expand your game even more, I think those are things that, you know, will come with time. So. Okay. I have one more concern. Uh, and we'll talk about this as we get into the bigs for you. But before that, thanks to our title sponsor, Stakes, you can predict sports, build your track record, and earn digital trophies. You get your predictions on the record. You can predict anything in the game for free and see how you measure up with fans and influencers like us. You can flex your wins, broadcast your takes to our community of sports fans with just a few taps on your phone, And you can earn credibility, build your public perceptions track record by winning competitions and earning NFT trophies for making the perfect call. Go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. That is S-T-A-K-E-S. Use the invite code Southeastern14 and get a double welcome bonus. Okay, Blake, you talked about getting to the foul line. Last year, I'm looking at Ken Palm, Arkansas, 31st in the country at free throw rate to field goal attempts, 37.2%, and shot it well when it got there, 76%. That ranked 39th in the country. I look at the free throw shooting percentages. Davis was 71% a year ago. Council was 85 um, so that, that's, you know, look, probably your, your guards are going to shoot a lot of your free throws, but th- do you get into hack a shack with some of the bigs? <laughs> You're looking at percentages, Kamani Johnson, um, if you consider him a big 54%, Jalen Graham at Arizona state, 53%, the Mitchells each shot 52 to 53%. I, I do worry about that for them a little bit is do teams get selective and put certain guys at the line? I mean, look, bigs who cannot shoot foul shots, that is hardly a problem unique to Arkansas. And if people think we're being unduly critical of Arkansas, my response to that is when you are probably an elite team, your flaws go under the microscope a little bit more, uh, especially as teams are trying to figure out how do we beat this team? That is one concern I have here. 
Yeah, I mean, I I think it's it is a team. You know, like I say, go back to last year. They shot more free throws than anybody in the country. Eight hundred and thirty three free throws attempted last year. A um, and M was second, by the way, with eight twenty five. Um, and so that, like I said, that has been something that they have. And I think this is going to be a team that's. You know, I don't know if they shoot eight hundred and thirty three this year, but I think they're going to need to get to the free throw line a lot. And you know, I think that's something else that must talked about from their overseas trip was didn't feel like they got to the free throw line enough. And, and I think that's something he's going to push and, and understanding that, you know, again, we talk about their team last year, right? Like that was a team that it wasn't just one guy necessarily that got the free throw line. It was a variety of guys. And I think that's what you're bringing up here is that we know, I think Nick Smith will get the free throw line just because of how he drives the ball. Anthony Black will get to the free throw line just because of that. Davis will get the free throw line. But if we're talking about, you know, big guys in particular, um, you know, you're going to have to get some points out of those guys. And, and that's where I think I, I, one of the biggest, I don't even know if it's like a question, but I think it's more of intrigue in terms of what offensively, what does the output look like from their, their guys mm -hmm. that are <laughs> what they're guys that are six, nine or higher. <laughs> like maybe that's the best way to put it. Like offensively, what's the output from the, you know, the Mitchells from the Trevon Brazils from a uh, Jalen Graham, like what, what does the offensive output look like from those guys that I don't, I can't tell you completely just yet, but I think that they, they certainly have options there and there's a lot of upside with all those guys. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, can you get everybody playing to their strengths in, in your offense and how you're going to run it? And I think that's, that's a fair question at this point. Um, you know, so I think, look, they, these are all, like you said, we're, we're, we're trying to find things for a team that, as I mentioned earlier, is a preseason top 10 team going to be one of the favorites to win the sec. Um, but you know, th there are some of these things that, like I mentioned, I don't think this is going to be a team that's going to just come out and run everybody off the floor starting November 6th or whatever. I think, you, you know, you're not going to see what Arkansas can be till probably December, January. Um, you know, just because I think that they are going to have to figure some of these things out, because like I said, size is going to be a strength. I think they're going to rebound well. And I think that's where you talk about the big guys getting the free throw line. I think there'll be a lot of opportunities on offensive rebounds because of the size they're going to have there. I mean, Brazil is just a tremendous athlete. We talk about, you know, the Mitchells, they're both what, 6'10". So I think, you know, that's where they're going to have to figure that part out. And I think just as the experience comes, that will help too, because look, I mean, you, we are talking about a team that's basically retooling their entire rotation, right? Um, minus Davis pretty much. I mean, you know, and I think again, that I think in that, but, but there's nothing wrong with that. If you have the talent that's coming in that they do and we'll be able to kind of play off of each other really well. So, um, yeah, I mean it's these are things that I think the strength of the strength, strength of Arkansas is going to be their backcourt. Um front court, I think we'll still see how it plays out. I think defensively is where you look at the front court guys and feel like okay, going to be huge because you talk about, you know, Mikel Mitchell, how many shots he blocked last season like 70 something. I think it was. Um I think he led the uh A10, did he not? Yeah, I think that yeah, something like that. I, I say he blocked 7 70 something shots. So, you know, he's a guy I think that will come in and help them defensively. Um, so, you know, again, we're, we're, we're talking about a lot of different things here, but I think that's, what's fun about doing preseason previews is because we don't know the answers to all these questions yet, but I think that, that Arkansas has enough guys to work with that. I think offensive rebounding from this big group in particular from these big guys that have length and, and wingspan again, even adding in a wash or a Johnson or those kind of guys. Um, I think that they're, we, we don't know as much about their front court production yet as we do about their back court production, but that's not to say they can't get there eventually. So, well, they've got four guys between six, nine and six ten. Uh, I don't know that any team in the country has got four bigs with the experience in the production these guys have I mean the Mitchell twins last year averaged 3.8 blocks a game between them at Rhode Island yeah. Brazil missed what most of the pre-conference portion 
of the schedule, I guess, missed all of November last year from Missouri and like really came on late. He was a big force in the SEC tournament. He scored 15 points in the loss to LSU. That was a, a season high for him. One of the most um, improved you know, the players minutes, in the SEC last year. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. minutes went up. Uh, and I'm looking at the offensive ratings for him at Ken Palm last year. From They were really good. They were pretty good. Uh, but, I mean, you, you've you got – he averaged, what, almost two blocks a game last year playing, what, just barely half the game. Um, you've got – oh, good grief, the kid from Arizona State, Jalen Graham, who averaged almost 10 and 5 a year ago. The Mitchells averaged, you know – one of them was 10 and seven. The other one was 11 and six almost. I mean, you've yeah. got guys who can, they, they can all score in the low post. They rebounded. Um, they blocked shots. Graham wasn't as big of a shot blocker as the others. But I mean, you, you go too deep at every spot here, Blake, at, at the four and the five. So I was going to say, to add on something here, you know, we always talk about Blue Ribbon. Um, something that Ricky Council said, and it was kind of what I was thinking earlier, and I just saw it kind of in the the thing. He's like, I've always um, wanted somebody like Trevon Brazil, where I can just throw the ball in the air and just let him go get it. Like, just just throw that thing off the backboard and let Brazil just go up and just nab it off the top of the backboard. And there, there you go. There's Put that play into the the rotation. Eric Musselman is watching this. Put a play in where you just throw it off the top of the backboard. See how high Trevon Brazil can jump to go get it. And then let's just, let's just use that as offense sometimes. So... Um, let's see if that works, but no, I mean, in all seriousness, like you said, you're, you're, you got depth. Um, this is a team that will, will find itself as it goes through the non-conference portion of the schedule. Not unlike other teams with muses that has, has had before at Arkansas. Um, and, and again, I think it's, you know, we talk about in basketball, the difference between basketball and football is you don't really overreact to one loss because there's a lot of games. And I think with Arkansas, like, even if they struggle early on in some of these spots and you're going to see a lot of people out there that may say, Oh, well, you know, Arkansas, no, you never should have been a top 10 team and all this. I think if you're an Arkansas fan, you kind of just sit back and say, all right, we know we're working with a, a young team, especially young in terms of ball driven. Like the guys who are going to have the ball in their hands a lot are going to be young guys. Um, and I think that was something else they talked about in the overseas was the turnovers and those kind of things. Wouldn't be shocked if that's an issue early, but I think with the potential that's there and just, you know, this is the kind of team I think must is like, all right, if I got into coaching because I love to teach. Like these are the kind of things you can, you're teaching this team to kind of put everything together to get these young guys acclimated to everything they're going to see, not just, you know, in college basketball, but specifically in the SEC. And I think that's where you're going to see them really come along um, because the potential is just outstanding with this entire group. And uh, yeah, I, I'm just fascinated to kind of see how the rotation plays out, um, you know, with, with all these guys, because they, they do have a lot of options and I think it's just a fun group. That's very talented. And again, I'd be surprised if they're not, they're not competing for, for an SEC title. Well, you mentioned how in first two months for Arkansas was nothing like, what we saw from there on. I mean, lose to Vandy in their home opener, lose three straight to start the SEC season. We're going, what has he got here? This isn't even a tournament team. You know the rest of the story. Must beats Gonzaga, gets to the Elite Eight. Well, when I I feel like, and this isn't a hard, fast rule, I, I feel like I start really paying attention to what teams are mid-February. Sometimes that's when teams really start to gel. Mid-February on for them is going to be very interesting. If you want to be literal about it, the 15th, A&M on the road, followed by Florida at home, Georgia at home, Alabama on the road, Tennessee on the road, Kentucky at home. And then we get to the tournament. Just about the time Arkansas really should be gelling, my goodness, the schedule really hits hard, and that is going to be fun to watch. I have a feeling – we're going to spend a lot of preview time on these guys with some of these games. Yeah. This, these are going to be fun. I mean, again, it's just – as the SEC as a whole, as we said, I mean, there's a, 
a good chance you may have at least five SEC teams in the top 25 to start the season. Um, I mean, realistically, six. You, well, I was going to say, you could have five maybe even in the top 15, in all honesty. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but I think there are five teams with that kind of potential to start the season. Um, so, and Arkansas is one of them. Well, like I said, we're not going to beat around the bush there. It's clear that, that Arkansas is one of those teams. So, yeah, I mean, it's – um. Again, it's it's going to be fun, I think, to watch this team grow because I think they're just going to get better and better. It's just, um, you know, you kind of have to work through, I think, some of the early early issues because I think there there will be some. I, I, I would be shocked if this team just comes out and they're just perfect from day one. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that, again, it's going to take a little while to put all the pieces in place and figure out exactly what your rotation is going to be. But you know what? That's not unlike anything we've said with Eric Muscle in the past several seasons. He, he plays around with different things early in the non-conference. Um, having Maui this year, it's going to be a lot of fun to see kind of how they navigate that. And, you know, just kind of, I mean, because you, you know you're going to play, you know you're going to play talented teams in Maui. And I think that's great to have on their schedule early on. It's just to be able to, you know, play those kind of games and, and really figure out what you have. And I think we'll learn a lot about this team coming out of that. Um, like I said, in addition to all the other, you know, games they're going to play on their schedule. So. Yeah, should be fun to watch. Not a lot of coaches have been as good as preparing teams for March like Eric Muscle, and that goes back to Nevada too. So yeah, back we'll be back watching Arkansas days. with a lot of interest. The conference schedule this year is going to be so much fun. Yeah. The league is is great at the top. It is deep in the middle and even the even the bottom end. I so you know what that means, Chris. Awful teams in there. You know what that means. That means you got to be well fed. You got to get the corn nuts. You got to grab the zero bars. And you've also got to be gassed up because uh, the must bus pulling out here in about a month, um, getting ready to hit the road for another wild and wacky season of college basketball. And uh, yeah, so we'll see kind of how many miles are on those tires uh, this season. L last couple of years, Chris, they've, the tread on those tires is starting to wear out a little bit because they, they've been they've been driving for quite a while. So we'll see if they can drive a little bit further this season. Have we checked the brakes on the must bus? Or does the must bus even have brakes? Well, slow down every now and then. But um, right. they hit a couple bumps in the road um, last December to January. But we'll see if that's the case again this season. So, Well, more than likely there will be bumps in the road because you've <laughs> got to figure out who plays. you got to try to keep people happy you've got still in some spots a, a young team and and even the front court which is not young all new to your program so th this is a spot where you don't freak out if it doesn't go exactly your way early because so much talent and a coach who knows how to get it ready for the back end when it all yeah. matters Yep. I think Arkansas is going to be a little bit different than let's say a team like Tennessee, right? Chris, I think they're a good comparison because Tennessee, think about how many yeah. guys they got coming back that have played together. Those kind of, and I'm sure there's other teams I can think of, but Kentucky. Yeah. You know, it, it's going to be a little different because I think that you're, you're working with almost a new roster when you think about it. Um, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how it plays out, but uh, clearly, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty high on Arkansas. Got them in my preseason top 10. Um, as we talked about in our power rankings tiers, I think it's Kentucky, Arkansas. I think I may have left Tennessee out of there. I'd, I'd like to probably put them in, but that's why they were early preseason tiers because we'll have our other set of power rankings coming before the season starts. Early means we reserve the right to brag if we get it right <laughs> and to not be held accountable if we get it wrong. Right? Or it means it we works? have no idea what we're talking about just yet. <laughs> no, it, 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 That's we why did, we're saying yes. early. <laughs> We, we have we have just started our our basketball research, so we we are in the midst of football as we do this. It is late September, in case you're watching this down the line as as we do this video. So, yep. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Uh, we intend to get around to previewing every SEC team for the basketball season. For Blake Lovell, I'm Chris Lee. Thanks for watching. Lots of other videos coming out on our channel very soon. So again, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of those.